Good morning everyone. We are gathered here today to examine the important question of whether punch dairy will be inherited by the next generation. We will discuss the scientific concepts of Lamarck's theory of evolution and the objections to it posed by Augustus Weissman. We will consider the scientific evidence to help us make an informed conclusion on this matter. Let's begin. Organic evolution is the idea that organisms have become increasingly complex and distinctive over a long period of time. It proposes that living organisms have evolved from the first living organisms over billions of years, a process still in effect today. This theory has had an enormous influence on scientific and medical research. It has been a major factor in our knowledge of the world and is the basis of contemporary biology. Theories of evolution have been around since the early 19th century, with Jean-Baptiste de Lamarck the first to introduce a theory about it in his book Philosophie Zoologique. His theory of Lamarckism suggests changes in the environment of certain organisms can lead them to use certain organs more or less, and that this change can be inherited and passed on to future generations. To support his theory, Jean-Baptiste de Lamarck cited the example of the length of a giraffe's neck which he believed to be a result of environmental influence. It is clear then that the impact of the environment on evolution has been acknowledged for a long time. Organic evolution is being discussed, with a focus on acquired characters. Those are the traits that are developed during the lifetime of an organism and can be passed on to their offspring. The best example of this is in the evolution of the giraffe and the snake, with the giraffe having an elongated neck and front limbs as a result of its use of these body parts, and the snake having no limbs due to their disuse over many generations. To further comprehend the importance of acquired characters it is wise to look at natural selection and the adaptation process. Augustus Weissmann was a German biologist and physician who proposed a scientific theory of inheritance based on mutations, rather than on Lamarckism. He is widely recognized as the father of modern genetics, and his work has had a significant impact on how we understand organic evolution. Weissmann's theory of evolution has provided us with a deeper understanding of the process of life and it has served as a reliable source of knowledge for future research in evolutionary biology. In 1891, August Weissmann conducted an experiment called decotylization to investigate the effects of acquired characters in living organisms. He cut off the tails of two rats and then crossed the tail less rats and observed the progeny. Weissmann repeated this experiment 22 times and determined that no rat in the progeny had a tail, demonstrating that the somatoplasm in the body cells cannot pass on the acquired characters, only the germplasm in the reproductive cells. This finding is now known as Weissmann's hypothesis and it demonstrates that acquired characters are not passed on in inheritance. Organic evolution is a concept that proposes that minor changes found in organisms can be passed on genetically, accumulating across time and building to noticeable changes in an organism's somatoplasm. Furthermore, it suggests that the environment can have an impact on the organism's somatoplasm, causing alterations that are then passed down to future generations. Organic evolution is a process in which populations of organisms become more complex over time. This complexity is seen in the emergence of new species, which occurs due to an increase in genetic diversity. This diversity can provide populations with new adaptations to the environment, allowing them to adapt to ongoing environmental changes. The process generally takes hundreds of thousands of years and functions as an important factor in the evolution of species. 
Organic evolution looks at how organisms differ and evolve over time. Strong muscles developed by athletes are not usually passed down to their children, and neither is a trait such as perforation of the pinna to wear ornaments. Organic evolution explores how the characteristics of organisms change from generation to generation. Organic evolution is an essential subject in biology that has been researched for a long time. Neo-Lamarckism was a great contributor to this topic and its followers, Cope, Osborne, Packard, and Spencer, brought about great progress in the comprehension of organic evolution. Through their work, modern biologists gain access to this massive and still increasing quantity of knowledge to get a better idea of the intricacies of life. Organisms have been able to adapt due to ever-evolving environmental conditions since the dawn of life. Neo-Lamarckists propose that organisms are able to acquire new characteristics through the process of adaptation. It is suggested that external conditions influence cells to produce secretions, which then transfers the new variation to future generations through the bloodstream. This implies that organisms are able to continually advance and transform over time to better suit their habitat, adapting in order to better thrive. Paul Kammerer conducted an interesting study observing the changes in the cave-dwelling salamander, Proteus anguinus when exposed to daylight. Remarkably, the normal eyes and skin color of the salamanders were passed to the next generation, demonstrating the evolutionary power of daylight. This study is a testament to the adaptability of living organisms to their environment over time. Darwinism, an evolutionary theory proposed by Charles Robert Darwin in the 1800s, suggests that populations evolve over time through a process of natural selection. This selection occurs when certain traits become more or less favorable based on environmental conditions thus giving certain individual organisms better chances for survival and reproduction. Consequently, populations can slowly change over time, a process known as organic evolution. Charles Darwin published his revolutionary theory of evolution in 1859, which was based on three different publications, Thomas Malthus' an essay on the principle of population, Sir Charles Lyell's principles of geology, and Alfred Russell Wallace's essay on the tendency of varieties. To explain his theory of evolution, Darwin published Origin of Species the same year, outlining the mechanism of natural selection. Charles Darwin proposed the theory of natural selection, which explains how evolution may have occurred in nature. Darwin's theory is based on observations, facts and inferences. Individuals with favorable variations are more successful in reproductive process and the favorable variations become more prevalent in population. This theory is an important part of understanding the process of evolution. Moving on to the final topic of our presentation, organic evolution necessitates discussing prodigality of production, or overproduction, as it serves as the basis for all further implications of organic evolution. Additionally, population constancy is essential for evolutionary trends to take place. What's more, there is a struggle for existence, where various species must compete with each other and their environment in order to survive. Lastly, the universal occurrence of variations forms the root of the theory of natural selection. Organisms have a natural inclination to reproduce in great quantities. This profuse generation technique permits fluctuation in the populace, in this way permitting advancement and adjustment to evolving situations. As competition for assets increments, just the fittest will endure and duplicate, prompting the general improvement of the species. Paramecium is an incredible organism, capable of reproducing through binary fission up to three to four times a day. It is estimated that in only 9,000 generations, the total volume of paramecia can reach up to 10,000 times the size of the Earth, a phenomenon known as prodigality of production which is only visible in organic evolution. Remarkably, some creatures on Earth have exceptional reproductive abilities. 
Salmon can produce up to 28 million eggs in one season, while starfish can produce up to 1 million eggs. If a small percentage of these eggs hatch and the larvae grow to the reproductive age, the seas would rapidly become luxuriant with life. Organic evolution is an astounding phenomenon that has been occurring for millions of years. The elephant is a prime example of the capacity of evolution, being able to create 19 million descendants in the 800th generation. This skill is evident in all species, regardless of its size, granting them the ability to adjust to the ever-evolving atmosphere. To understand population constancy, we must look at the relationship between food and other sources of sustenance, and the population of any species in nature. Unusually high population growth is seldom seen, as the offspring die in large numbers before reaching reproductive age. Keeping a balance between these two aspects is necessary to maintain the constant population. In the late 19th century, the idea of struggle for existence became a key element in the discussion of evolution. Intraspecific struggle relates to conflict between individuals of the same species, while interspecific struggle involves competition between different species. Such competition between species can take place in various ways and is generally the result of limited resources such as food and space. This struggle for sustenance and inhabitation is a major factor in defining the environment around us, and in the formation of new species. The slide focuses on the competition among members of the same species for food, shelter, and mates. This competition is illustrated by the image of the group of antelopes. Intraspecific struggle, or competition between individuals of the same species, is thought to be the greatest factor limiting the rate of reproduction. Organisms of different species often inhabit the same environment, with the potential for them to compete for the same resources. This type of competition, known as interspecific struggle, can significantly influence how species evolve. For instance, antelopes and zebras may contest for food and shelter, while antelopes and kudos may vie over areas to graze and raise young. Getting to grips with the role of interspecific struggle in shaping the evolution of organisms is an essential part of the evolutionary puzzle. Focus will be on the physiological differences between individuals of a species. All organisms within a species are not exactly alike, exhibiting variations that could be beneficial or detrimental. These variations enable one organism to prevail in the struggle for survival more so than another. Furthermore, the advantageous variations are passed on to their offspring, thus completing a cycle of evolution. Organic evolution aids in comprehending the variety of life on Earth. It explains why some individuals are more adequate to their environment than others, and how populations can change with the passing of time. Darwin's theory of natural selection states that organisms possessing beneficial mutations will be in a better position to procreate, leaving more descendants than those without such alterations. Basically, those with the best adjustments to their environment will be the strongest organisms and will be able to endure. This dynamic process of natural selection is a crucial part of organic evolution and assists us in understanding how living things have developed throughout the years. Herbert Spencer's theory of natural selection has been pivotal in helping us decipher organic evolution. By observing how organisms with advantageous mutations prevail in the struggle for existence, we gain a better understanding of how evolution operates. This is an essential insight to the how the organic world develops, and one which has been imperative to grasping the natural world. Organic evolution is the process by which populations of organisms become more adapted to their environment over successive generations. Variability and inheritance provide the basis of this adaptation, which is formed over time as favorable variations accumulate to give rise to a new species. 
Organic evolution is the sum of minor, unpredictable alterations that take place over an extended time frame. Eventually, the organism may go through so many changes that it can no longer produce offspring with the original species. At this juncture, it has evolved into a different species that is separated from its progenitor's population. Darwin thought that the development of new species was the result of the cumulative impact of these variances. Lamarck's concept of the formation of new species was proposed in his book, Philosophy Zoologic. His idea was that species could evolve in response to changing environments and he established five key principles to explain the process. These include the principle of use and disuse, the principle of inheritance of acquired characters, the principle of population, the principle of abilities of organisms to increase in complexity, and the principle of geological change. Collectively, these principles explain how species can develop and evolve over time. Mutation is a process by which a gene or set of genes within an individual organism can randomly change, leading to the emergence of a new trait that can be passed onto the organism's offspring. Hugo de Vries coined the term mutation in 1901, and since then it has been established as a primary factor for organic evolution, alongside natural selection. We examine the theory suggested by August Weissmann. Firstly, Biogenesis theory claims that all living things are constituted of cells and derive from already existing living things. Secondly, germplasm theory establishes that hereditary info is passed from one generation to the subsequent one by a special substance, the germplasm. Thirdly, biogenetic law states that the advancement of a living organism follows the same steps as its evolutionary development. Lastly, Sexual selection theory states that particular traits may be preferred by members of one sex more than the other while procreation. Organic evolution, when first proposed by Darwin in 1859, was met with a number of objections such as how complex structures like eyes or wings could arise from a series of mutations. However, advances in evolutionary theory and biology have answered these objections and provided overwhelming evidence of organic evolution making it the basis of modern biology. Organic evolution is an accepted concept, yet there are objections to Darwinism. The explanation for survival of the fittest is known, but there is no satisfactory explanation for the cause, origin, or inheritance of variations. Moreover, there is no knowledge of how so-called, useless, variations such as vestigial organs are inherited. Despite these unanswered questions, coming to terms with organic evolution is essential to understanding the links between different species, and how they evolved to be what they are today. Organic evolution is a branch of biology that studies the evolutionary process of organisms and how they change and adapt over time. This unit will delve into the different ways such changes occur, such as the subtle, fluctuating variations on a species level that may not always be heritable. Additionally, this lesson will discuss how the findings related to organic evolution can be applied to the study of population genetics and evolutionary biology. Alfred Russell Wallace, a British naturalist who worked in the Malaya Archipelago, had also come to similar conclusions to those of Darwin around the same time. Moving on, let's look at the advantages of incorporating a meditation practice into one's daily schedule. Kettlewell a British ecologist, conducted experiments in 1848 to prove the hypothesis of natural selection, focusing on industrial melanism in the peppered moth, Biston betularia. His experiments aimed to illustrate how natural selection could result in visible changes in the moth population due to industrial pollution. His findings showed that the peppered moth adapted to its environment as the Industrial Revolution caused the color of the moths to change. This groundbreaking experiment provided proof of natural selection in the field of evolutionary biology.
Taking a look at Biston betularia, a species of moth exhibiting two distinct forms, we can see the result of only one allele of the gene for pigment which forms the dark pigment melanin. Despite the same habits, the two forms differ greatly in appearance. During the day, both forms rest on trees. Investigating this example gives us insight into the process of organic evolution. Prior to the Industrial Revolution in Great Britain, light forms of organisms were largely prevalent but dark forms of these same organisms arose by random mutation though extremely rare. As the Industrial Revolution progressed, the prevalence of the dark form increased, resulting in a completely new ecological landscape. For the past 200 years, environmental pollution has drastically changed the color patterns of light peppered moths throughout the UK. Once the majority of the moths had pale colored wings to blend in with the pale lichen on the non-polluted trunks, but the rise of industrialization and smog has caused those trunks to darken. This makes the light peppered moths easy prey for predators as their wings are now much more visible. Research from the 1950s has shown that industrialization has a detrimental effect on the environment. Surveys from that decade show that in areas not affected by air pollution, lighter colored forms are more common, whereas darker colored forms are more common in polluted areas. Observing the example of the light and dark moths, it is evident that changes to the environment can cause drastic evolutionary shifts. Industrial pollution has caused the trees that moths land on to darken, thus producing a changed environment. Moths with lighter colors were easily visible and, therefore, more exposed to predators. While moths with darker colors were better hidden and thus more preferred by natural selection. Bernard Kettlewell conducted an experiment to test the hypothesis that the evolution of any species is an ongoing process that constantly adapts to changing environmental conditions. He released Biston betularia in two sets of equal numbers, one in a polluted urban area, and one in a rural area that was free from pollution. The results of the experiment showed that natural selection had led to the development of a phenotypic trait adapted to the changing environment. This experiment serves as an example of how species can evolve and better survive their respective environments. This example demonstrates that the environment can greatly influence the evolution of a species. The melanic moths were better camouflaged against the trees of Birmingham, which allowed them to better evade predators. This highlights how natural selection can create a powerful transformation to a species in a relatively short amount of time. The gray-peppered moth found in the rural areas of Dorset is an interesting case to discuss. This particular moth has unique characteristics that have enabled it to blend into its light-colored environment, improving its chances of survival. However, with the introduction of pollution control laws, the selection process reversed in urban areas, making the dark form more common. This is a remarkable example of how organisms can adapt to their environment. Mutation theory was proposed by Dutch botanist Hugo de Vries to explain sudden, random, inheritable changes that can occur in organisms. He was the first to introduce and coin the term, mutation, for this concept. These random changes can have a major impact on the genetic makeup of organisms, and may be key in the process of evolution. Taking a look at slide 50, the common evening primrose, or Enothera lamarckiana, was first observed by the French naturalist Jean-Baptiste Lamarck in 1815 in four distinct forms. This significant observation opened up an era of evolution research and assisted in the development of the concept of organic evolution. Organic evolution is an intriguing subject that reveals why particular species have created distinctive characteristics over time. O. brevistylis has a petite style while O. levifolia has even leaves, and the significant distinction between the colossal variety of O. gigas and the much smaller O. nonella, a mutant variety, can be seen. Examining organic evolution assists us to grasp the spectacular variety of the natural world. 
Morgan's research on the inheritance pattern of mutations in Drosophila melanogaster has been highly influential in understanding evolution. His findings, along with those of Darwin and Battison, have been key in forming our current knowledge of variations in species. Mutation theory plays a significant role in organic evolution. Random mutations can take place in populations that breed naturally and these mutations are distinct, not accruing slowly between generations. Moreover, the mutations are complete, meaning there is no existing form in between. All of these mutations are subject to the process of natural selection. Discussing the mutation theory proposed by Bernard Shea, Stevens, T. H. Morgan, and Hugo de Vries, and its relation to organic evolution is our aim. Mutations are changes to the genetic material within an organism, often due to external elements. These changes are what lead to alterations in species over time. Despite the randomness of the mutations, some have been found to be advantageous in the long run and can cause a species to evolve. Understanding these theories can give us a better comprehension of how species evolve and how to benefit from them. Morgan conducted experiments to study how mutations are inherited, focusing on yeast, drosophila and evening prime rows. His findings showed that none of these could explain the pattern of inheritance of mutations. The modern synthetic theory of evolution explains the diversity of living organisms on Earth by incorporating aspects of biology, genetics and evolutionary theory. Natural selection, mutation and genetic drift are mechanisms that are utilized in this unified theory, which also sheds light on why some species survive and others become extinct. This theory provides us with a better understanding of the evolution of the diversity of life on Earth over time. In the late 19th century, a major shift in scientific thinking occurred as Weismann's germplasm theory, de Vries' mutation theory, and Mendel's laws of inheritance all contributed to an improved comprehension of the source and inheritance of variations. This helped Darwinism to gain more recognition and advanced scientific understanding of evolution. Advances in evolutionary biology since Charles Darwin have enabled us to comprehend natural selection in greater detail. Ronald Fisher, Sewell Wright and Ernst Meyer have elucidated the concept of natural selection in accordance with the post-Darwinian discoveries, which make up the synthetic theory, genetical theory or neo-Darwinism. Building on this understanding, we can start to unravel the powers that influence organic evolution. Organic evolution is the concept that species undergo modifications through time, being driven by five fundamental elements. Synthetic theory states that today's species are generated by combining earlier and simpler species. Gene mutations indicate the random adjustments in genes that originate fresh traits or traits that contrast from the progenitors. Chromosomal mutations are changes in the number of chromosomes in a creature or modifications in the framework of a single chromosome. Reproductive isolation is the barrier that prevents two species from copulating and assists to keep them split. All five of these components are vital for organic evolution. Gene mutations can affect the physical characteristics of an organism, resulting in changes in its phenotype. These changes can range from size, color, shape, or behavior, to changes in biochemical processes. Beneficial and detrimental effects to the organism are possible depending on the mutation. Ultimately, the effects of mutations can be seen in the organism's physical characteristics, as well as in its behavior.
Chromosomal mutations are changes in the structure of chromosomes that can result from deletions, additions, duplications, inversions, or translations. These mutations can alter individual genes and thus can cause a broad spectrum of effects. Deletions remove parts of the chromosome, while additions, duplications, inversions, and translations lead to changes in the gene sequences and the entire chromosome structure. The intensity and impact of these mutations rely on the kind of mutation that happens and which gene is affected. Organic evolution is powered by alterations in the arrangement of chromosomes that can happen through two procedures. Addition and deletion. Addition occurs when sections of DNA link to the chromosome, while deletion happens when part of the chromosome is lost. These transformations can have diverse impacts on an organism's general hereditary constitution, which thusly can shape its evolution. Genetic material can be inserted and reinserted in oaks through chromosomal duplication and inversion. In chromosomal duplication, two sister chromatids are separated which gives rise to two chromosomes having identical genetic material. On the other hand, chromosomal inversion involves breaking of a single chromosome which is then reinserted in the reverse direction. These processes can significantly influence the genetic makeup of oak trees. Organic evolution is the process of adaptation and change of organisms over time. Chromosomal mutations are a major influence in this process as they cause changes in the physical characteristics of the organisms. When these mutations cause changes in the offspring, it can result in the emergence of new species. Mutations and selection are what has allowed more complex organisms to survive and progress over time. Recent studies suggest that genetic recombinations due to crossing over during meiosis are an important factor in driving evolutionary change. This is because it allows for the formation of new gene combinations within the gene pool, thereby increasing the genetic diversity of a population. The increased diversity encourages evolutionary changes that, if beneficial, can be inherited by later generations. Exploration of genetic recombination, the rearrangement of existing genetic information, can create entirely new patterns of behavior and characteristics in organisms. Recombination of genetic material results in new heritable variations, facilitating biological evolution. Organic evolution is the gradual transition of organisms from less complex to more complex forms with time. Natural selection functions as a mechanism for organic evolution, permitting organisms to adjust to their environment. It operates as a filter that selectively favors some genetic modifications while disregarding others, leading to changes in the physical features of organisms. When the environment changes, those organisms with advantageous characteristics are more likely to endure and transfer those features to their offspring, while those with less advantageous traits have less likelihood of surviving. Such process of natural selection stimulates organic evolution of organisms. Reproductive isolation is the lack of genetic transfer between different populations. This is an essential element in the development of a new species as well as preserving the consistency of a species as a whole. Although interbreeding is possible between different species, if there is no gene flow, which is facilitated by reproductive isolation, then a new species cannot arise. Discussing the modern synthesis of natural selection, or neo-Darwinism, is the order of the day. We will examine how R.A. Fisher, Sewell Wright, and Ernst Meyer developed and improved the comprehension of natural selection and its relationship to organic evolution. Gaining an understanding of the evolutionary process will be our ultimate objective. Mutations are well known to be changes that occur within the DNA molecule. These changes are variations of the original sequence of biochemical bases that make up the DNA. 
In this question, the possible answers are mutations, atavism, gene mutations, or none of the above. The correct answer here is mutations.